Hello my friends and welcome to another From Good to Great. I really wanted to cover a topic that is a little bit dry and, in a, you know, it's not the most exciting topic to cover, but it's one of the most important ones. And that is entrenchment, close fighting and close defense. The mechanics of the game. Because they're kind of overpowered. I guess. Overpowered is the right word. So let's explain what these things are. Basically, it's attack versus defense. In So in open terrain, your, your correct attack, so your soft attack or your hard attack, is compared against the enemy's ground defense. That's the, that's the standard situation. However, a battle always takes place in the defender's tile. If the defender's tile is a close terrain space, i.e. a city, you'll see the close terrain marker here, then all that does is it changes your ground defense to your close defense. The thing is, your close defense is horrible on almost every unit in the game. It's literally zero. So, you know, if we look at these tanks here, you know, pick one. Your close defense is a big fat zero, whereas your ground defense is like 16 or 18 or 12 or, or whatever. So, apart from pioneers, which have an 8 in close defense, almost every unit is completely defenseless in a close fight. Now... The other thing, which is kind of ridiculous, is in close territory, you can get up to 10 entrenchment, usually. So cities and uh, forests, you can usually reach 10 entrenchment. If you have 10 entrenchment, every point of entrenchment reduces your attack by 10%. So if you have 10 out of 10 entrenchment, that means you are taking 100% less damage from vehicles. It's 10% from every level. It's slightly less for infantry. And uh, obviously, artillery mostly ignores it. But, I mean, that's not the point. You're, with artillery, you would be suppressing the enemy anyway, so you can attack them. So, all in all, what does that mean? That means if you have a big, powerful tank like this, and you attack... And it doesn't matter from which tile you attack, because it doesn't matter if you attack from this clear tile or this close tile. The battle will take place in the defender's tile. And the defender um, has 100% entrenchment here. So I will do no damage. And because my close defense is zero, despite the fact that they're just um, SMG infantry, apparently, despite the fact that they have a hard attack of seven, which is not very high, because it's being compared to my defense of zero, I would be massacred. Now, this infantry, this is kind of like a, here's one I prepared earlier, sort of. Actually, this, this happened by chance, but it's perfect to talk about this topic. This infantry has been shelled in the previous turn, and its defense will not drop any anywhere below four. It, four is the lowest you can go if you're in a close tile. So infantry will always enjoy the benefits of at least 40% damage reduction against vehicles. So the question is, how do you deal with units that are in close uh, positions? Oh, and one note that I would just make is... If you were to put your tank here, in the clear space, because you are in the clear space, they can't attack you. Because if they were to attack you, they would be facing your ground defense, which is way too high for them to penetrate. So they would do no damage to you and take massive casualties. So if you're, if you're attacking infantry in this situation, you want to place your tanks, even if you're just using them for the mass attack bonus, you want to place your tanks in the clear tiles. Because in the clear tiles, they the ground defense is used, and therefore they can defend themselves. 
You never want to position them in the city like this one is right now. If you can help it. Because in the city tiles, tanks are defenseless. Completely defenseless. So, yeah, in this case, we've already... Uh, this guy's entrenchment has already been brought down. Your main um, way of getting rid of them is to simply use units that ignore entrenchment like this flame tank. The best part about the flame tank's ignore entrenchment feature is that because these boys are enjoying a 40% reduction in damage no matter what, you know, it's it's 4 out of 10 right now. So if I attack them with... Well, if I attack them with tanks, I'll just get massacred. Because, once again, it's a battle in close. And, um... You know, you would think that I would do some damage. Because they've only got a 40% damage reduction. And I do have a high infantry attack. But it just, it just doesn't work out that way. Because of your... It seems to be like a ratio weighted on your defense versus their attack. And since your defense is like a massive zero, you just get slaughtered. You, you, you don't even get any kills. It feels like with 10 tanks and me attacking first, I should get some kills. But you don't. So let's examine this. Let's examine this in detail. There is actually a log of this. So I'm going to get massacred here. So what happened? The attacker's initiative is 8. The defender's is 4. But... They are actually getting a bonus to initiative from entrenchment and you can never get rid of it. You can't get rid of it. Because they'll always have four entrenchment in the close space. So entrenchment is actually incredibly OP. Or really powerful in... Even even at the minimum level from which you cannot reduce it anymore. It is still really OP. This bonus ensures that unless you have ridiculously... Um, ridiculously high initiative. You can't actually go first. Most, almost 99% of the time, you can't go first. So that's why you're getting slaughtered. Because as the attacker, you usually get a bonus to attack first with. But you won't actually attack first. Even if your initiative is much higher because of this, these, the, all these bonuses they get from entrenchment. Even if you've knocked it down to the lowest level. So what can you do? Well, what this means is that, you know, if we artillery these boys, then you'll know that um, they still get to attack first. That's why my casualties are so high. Because they are retaining that, that 4 out of 10, and the, the ratio of initiative is not changing in any way. So... Here's the bottom line for you. If you're playing this game on the hardest difficulty, the only realistic way to get rid of infantry, even infantry that you have shelled into paste, without taking horrendous damage, is to either totally suppress it, so it can't fight back at all, and therefore initiative doesn't matter. And one of the best ways that you can do that, although not here, is if you had two clear tiles, like here, Position your guys in these two clear tiles. That creates an encirclement. And they can't attack. They can't attack a tank in a uh, in an open tile. Because they'd get they would get murdered. So if I were to I think any of my units have actually got the mobility to get there. If you were to position like this, you block these three supply tiles here with this tank and you block these three so you can always encircle someone with just two with just two units if these are both clear tiles then the, the best that vehicles can do is park in the clear tiles and encircle the infantry and then when you end your turn the infantry will not attack tanks in clear tiles because they will be ruined 
So then you will start to get free and permanent suppression on them. Then you can bring your vehicles to bear, but only when they're totally suppressed. So that's nine. So three can still attack. Even three infantry is deadly because of the whole fact that it's going to be a close fight. And in a close fight, your defense is zero. It also gradually becomes harder to suppress enemies the more of them you've actually suppressed. So keep that in mind. You could obviously use the recon bonus to, uh, to push it. But one thing is, so you can see here, we're only gaining one suppression for each attack. If I undo this. So you can see here, the lot, this, this artillery gave us two. And a kill. Or one and a kill, you you very quickly find yourself only getting one suppression. But entrenchment will add, uh, sorry, encirclement will add one uh, two suppression, uh, four if you've got the special perk at the start of their turn. So if you can get them to, you know, in this case it's twelve and eight. If you can get them down to uh, needing two suppression, there you go. Then. At the start of their turn, they'll be totally suppressed. You can then attack them freely. Because uh, initiative won't matter if they can't actually fight back at all. But yeah, entrenchment is, is really, truly horrible. And so the only actual real effective ways to deal with it is with units such as pioneers that cause it to be ignored. But just know that even if engineers assist your tanks in ignoring some of the entrenchment that does not change the initiative reality or the fact that you have zero close defense. <clears throat> so it means that unless you've suppressed these boys into paste, they're still going to attack first and they're still going to do massive, massive damage to you. So in many ways, the actual bonus from the engineers is not actually helpful to your vehicles. The only time that it's helpful, really, realistically speaking, is when <clears throat> you have pioneers plus regular infantry. Then your pioneers can apply a greater entrenchment ignore bonus to your regular infantry. And regular infantry, while they'll still suffer the same problem of the defender getting better initiative, they come in bigger stacks and they're sort of a little bit more disposable, I guess. Than your, than your tanks are. But it still works out very badly for you. So you'll see here, if we attack with these... So you can see here that my base initiative is 4. Attack from close terrain, plus 1. This is because uh, I'm infantry. They got a minus 1 for the mass attack, but they did get 2 from the entrenchment, 5. So, <clears throat> the units shoot at the same time. And that's not too bad for you. A, uh, a, a massive uh, uh, mass attack basically gives you a 10% bonus for each point of mass attack. And what do we mean by point of mass attack? Well, let me just undo all this and I'll show you. So... This is two points of mass attack, so the bonus is 20%. The reason why is because it's one for a unit here, two for a unit here, and three for a unit here if this is the attacker. The further away the supporters are, the bigger the mass attack. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting a bit dry here. So let me just put this here. So you'll see here that this tank provides one extra point of mass attack. But if this tank was here, it should provide three. Oh, two. Okay. So it's two for the maximum distance. So the positioning is important. And it just seems to be... Mass attack seems to be like a general bonus. So even though these units have not been um, suppressed at all... We're actually getting to do three casualties here 
which is quite impressive considering before it was an 8 0 massacre. Of course, the recon won't make any difference because their initiative is higher, so they're going first. Now, there may be a point when your mass attack gets uh, so big that uh, it actually results in you going first, but it's quite rare. So if we look at the log for this fight, you'll see here that our initiative is 8, plus attack from one from uh, attacking from close terrain. Not that you usually want to do that with a vehicle, because if you're in close terrain as a vehicle, you've got no defense on their turn, presuming that they survive. We are terrain cap on initiative 1, so your effective initiative is 1. And their base initiative is 4, and we've got minus 4 for each point of the mass attack. But they still get the plus 2 from entrenchment. So it's 2. So, you really, you can't win, is the short, is the short answer. And it just once again comes down to having to actually suppress the units. To ensure that you, uh, you go first. But as you can see here, which tank you attack with does, does matter for the, for the mass attack bonus. You'll notice here that if I attack from the clear terrain, I'm still capped on initiative to one because the uh, the the battle will take place in the defender's tile always. So what does this mean? What does it all mean at the end of the day? Well, it means that you should keep your vehicles in clear tiles. You should um, basically only use infantry or, or units that ignore um, entrenchment to attack things in entrenchment. And artillery is just... It's just so critical in actually realistically getting rid of infantry that, are, that is entrenched like this. Even with a basic level of entrenchment of 4, which you can't get it any lower. You are still going to absolutely struggle to do any realistic amount of damage with your vehicles. Because just all the odds are stacked against you. Unless, of course, you use uh, entrenchment ignoring <laughs> vehicles. So why was that so effective? Well, I'm getting the uh, the close terrain blow bonus, blah 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 blah, but the cap on initiative in the terrain is still one. Oh, I had a mass I had a mass attack here that was like minus five, so we shoot at the same time. Now, what's interesting is. If you would kill a unit in one shot, it seems like you don't take any return fire. So this flame tank is, is really powerful. I've got loads of heroes on it. And it would actually uh, kill these enemies in one go. And therefore, I don't take any return fire. So the defender actually shoots first. 100% of damage will be applied before the attacker can shoot back. Right? So I should... I don't know if this is a bug. This could be a bug. If you kill an enemy in one hit, you don't take the reprisal. And I, I, I don't understand why, because in this combat, the defender shoots first. So they should do their one damage to me before I get to shoot. But that's not what's happening. In fact, I'm, for whatever reason, my attack is being calculated first. 
even though the defender should shoot first, my actual attack is being calculated first. And, uh, and of course they're dead by that point. It's very odd. So I should have lost one, but I didn't. And here you'll see that the bunker should take out four of my units. But once again, it won't do anything. Units shoot simultaneously, so I should be taking losses. I should be taking a lot of losses. At least four. And the RNG in this case would have made it seven if I had a high level RNG on, but I don't. So yeah, kind of an odd thing. So I hope this sort of really uh, brings into focus what these stats really mean and why pioneers are so good. Um, entrenchment is so OP. And basically you are relying on artillery encirclement or uh, entrenchment ignoring i.e. pioneers usually pioneers I think you'll spend most of your game using uh, pioneers to push infantry out of cities because all the bonuses that you get for being in a, in a city tile or in a forest tile and all the entrenchment you just can't realistically do any damage with anything but artillery um, and units that ignore entrenchment other than if you have an infantry unit like this one and there's two clear tiles, you can put two tanks in two clear tiles and they won't attack them because they won't want to attack a unit with such high ground defense in a clear tile where its ground defense will be used instead of its close defense. And the encirclement will uh, eventually suppress them down for you so that you can then deal with them. But it takes a lot of time, or it takes too much time. A lot of the time it takes too much time. So, anyway, I hope this is a benefit to you guys out there, that some of these mechanics will make a little bit more sense to you. And this really highlights why tanks are kind of a bit, a bit garbage in this game. Because when you face a map like this, where it's all close tiles everywhere, and to be honest, every uh, every bit of infantry that you ever encounter seems to be in a city. You know, throughout the whole game, you're basically removing infantry from city tiles. Um, your entire army might as well just not even be there. It's useless. The only things that matter, or seem to matter, is your artillery and your pioneers. And of course your flame tanks, if you've got any. But even flame tanks are prone to casualties because they don't have any close defense. They have zero close defense. And so one last thing I would say is that Vigilant is quietly one of the best heroes in the game. Vigilant prevents enemies from using your close defense rating, meaning that your ground defense is used no matter what. So a tank with a uh, Vigilant hero effectively fights like it's on a clear tile no matter where you put it and that means that enemy infantry will refuse to touch it and that's very useful uh, in a situation where in fact we can actually show this in a situation here where we only have one clear tile we can move this tank into the clear tile and we can move this into a city tile Although I can't actually quite get to where I want to be. I'll have to kill this first. Okay, so now this infantry is encircled. Now it will not want to attack either of these because Vigilance protects this one and this one is in the open. Obviously, we can we can uh, position our artillery to defend.
So using the rules here, we don't want to have any tanks or anything in um, in city tiles. So we'll go with that one there and that one there. Okay, so this is the setup that you might have. And because all of our vehicles are in clear tiles, except this one, but this one has vigilance, this infantry cannot do anything. There you go. They, uh, they did one damage, and in return they got completely barbecued for it. Ironically, I think the AI in its calculations maybe thinks that this unit has uh, has uh, is using its close defense of zero but uh, paid the ultimate price for it because uh, it was your uh, ground defense that was being used so it's just interesting to note that uh, if you do get a vigilance hero it might be the linchpin of uh, any encirclements you might make on infantry in close terrain because it makes uh, it makes the vehicle very 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 hard to kill, like exponentially harder to kill than it would have been. Okay, so that's uh, that's encirclement, entrenchment, and close defense. Hopefully explained and demystified. Um, yeah, entrenchment's just a total pain to deal with. And just note that all encirclement really does, or the most key thing about encirclement is. At the start of the enemy turn, it permanently suppresses them by two. And any suppression you do on your turn, the turn that the encirclement started, that will be permanent as well. That's the main feature of it. So if you if you have, say, four enemy infantry, you know that each su uh, successive artillery shot on the same infantry is going to do less and less suppression. So say you have four artillery and they have four infantry in an encirclement. You want one artillery shooting each infantry, therefore doing maybe six or seven suppression to each one. And then at the start of their turn, they will take on another two, taking them from seven to nine. And that's the, more, the most efficient way of, uh, of weakening them all so that you can then get in and deal with them. Yeah, I I actually, just on a side note on this good to great, I'm not sure how I feel about this mechanic, about the, the whole close tile and close defense mechanic. It, it bugs me that all tanks have such ridiculously low close defense that they're literally, conscripts can tear through them like they're made of tissue paper. You know, I, I mean, I appreciate that cities favor infantry. But even tanks driving down, you know, the middle of, like, big dual, dual carriageway streets or whatever in, in cities. They're not going to be particularly vulnerable or, like, not ridiculously vulnerable to, you know, a regiment of conscripts with bolt-action rifles. I just, I can't imagine it. Really. Um... And it's not like tanks with, you know, the capability to fire high explosive rounds, machine guns and all the rest of it, are not capable of destroying buildings with, with loads of infantry hiding in them. So, I don't know, it, it's a very all or nothing mechanic and I think it bothers me a little bit to, uh, to watch a regiment of conscripts destroy, you know, 10 Tiger 1s when there's honestly no way on this earth that a bolt action rifle penetrates that vehicle. It just they could they could fire at it till they're blue in the face. It would they would never ever damage those vehicles with rifles. It just wouldn't happen. <laughs> You'd be better off you know throwing heavy objects off the top of the building onto the roof of the tank and hoping to do some sort of crushing damage or uh dowsing them in fuel and setting them on fire but it's not like it's not like fuel was easy to come by in in World War II especially when these kind of sieges and stuff started happening so um 
yeah, it, it does, the mechanic perplexes me a bit, and it does place a lot of emphasis on on infantry to take to take cities and artillery um, and uh, I guess what where I'm leading to here is there aren't many circumstances in which tanks are actually that great in this game when you really think about it what they're good against is other tanks and one thing I want to highlight is it's not just infantry that can get 10 entrenchment. Things like artillery and anti-tank guns can also, in close tiles, get 10 entrenchment. And even though they may have a close defense of zero, 10 entrenchment means that the damage that you deal to them is reduced by 100%. So you, you can have a regiment of Tiger One tanks attacking fully entrenched artillery, big artillery, easy target, and you'll do no damage. You can't damage it. You have to get rid of the entrenchment. And even when you get the entrenchment down to the minimum, you're still struggling to actually damage the target with tanks. Whereas if you were using infantry, you would slaughter them relatively easily. Now, you know, as we've learned, tanks have got great defense out in the open tiles where entrenchment is not so much of a thing. But this game is mostly about capturing cities. So, in a game that's constantly pressurizing you to capture cities on a timeline, you're not spending a lot of time in like an open field engagement where tanks might be useful. And honestly, if you take 15 centimeter guns with their anti-tank ability, you can just march your infantry across open terrain against enemy tanks, backed up by artillery, and your artillery will slaughter their tanks. So, yeah, I don't know. It feels like compared to Panzer Corps One, tanks are a little bit, a little bit disappointing. But I mean, they they have their, they have their place in the late game against particularly nasty enemy tanks. Um, but in the early and mid game, a lot of what they bring to the table can be done by recon cars because recon cars have got generally decent stats and are, are roughly in the same boat as tanks so anyway that's it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope it demystifies some of this for you but if you uh, were wondering why it was so ridiculously hard to clean out infantry from uh, from cities, from close terrain, well now you know. It's not just... It's not just that, you know, close terrain uses your your zero ground, uh, your close defense rating of zero. It's also that they're getting an initiative bonus. It's also that entrenchment is massively reducing your attack power. Um, it's just a whole, a whole heap of things which Ironically makes it so that things like the Flampans are, are, are actually some of the best units in the game and that the only infantry you, the only infantry I ever use is pioneers because of because of the whole entrenchment thing. So yeah, I will see you guys next time.